Is there room for one more at the fire? Oh yeah, all survivors are welcome. Great, Come on in. thank you so much. What's, what's got you on the run? I'll try my best to tell you. It's a time I try to forget. Life was good for a young aphid in a sourgum field. There was sun, warmth, not to mention all the delicious leaf juice you could ever want. It was paradise. But then, well, it came. A black wasp buzzing overhead suddenly swooped in and started stinging, stabbing my friend Rosie and dozens of others. I tried calling for help, but it was no use. The wasp couldn't be stopped. My avid friends and I hid from all the chaos. We tried to stay quiet until that monster went away. Once it was safe, we pulled back the leaf to check on our friends. This is when things started getting weird. They were all fine. Even though they were attacked moments before, they were carrying on like nothing had happened. We found Rosie, and I asked if she was okay, you know, since I saw her get killed a few minutes ago. And she said she was okay, hurting a little bit, but thankful to still be around. Later that week, Rosie started acting a little differently. She was very quiet and not her usual talkative self. She just stared off into the distance, mumbling nonsense. My friend and I went to check on her, but she freaked us out a little. Neither of us wanted to get too close. When I finally did, I could see something moving inside of her, like a little worm. She kept getting worse. Rosie stopped moving. Her exoskeleton turned from green to brown. She stopped eating altogether. When I touched her, I could feel she was paper thin, almost hollow. Why wasn't she eating? The other aphids the wasp stung started turning brown too, just like Rosie. There was nothing we could do for them. We just had to move on. But the nightmare wasn't over. One day, a weird rattling sound came from Rosie's body. Then, a sawing sound, like something was cutting its way out of her from the inside. It was another wasp, fully grown and emerged from Rosie's body. They started coming out of all of the brown aphids. Dozens of them attacking all over again. That's when I knew when they were stinging, what they were really doing was laying eggs. The wasp would never leave us alone, so I shouted for the others to run and find cover. I knew I had to escape. So I flew away from the field of horrors. I never looked back. I already knew what was coming. That's nothing. I basically survived a zombie apocalypse. It all started when my boyfriend Dave asked me to go out on a dinner date. We went to a restaurant called Nature's Delicious Way. The waiter, a praying mantis, tells us the special on the menu is mayfly soup. I was a little jealous because I'm a vegetarian. I looked around and noticed every single bug in the room had ordered that entree. Bonjour, welcome to Nature's Delicious Way. What can I get you? I think I'll just have a fruit salad tonight. And for you, sir. I'll take what everyone else is having. Mayfly sounds mighty tasty. Shipmenties, I need more mayfly soup. Do they like the soup? I'm hearing crickets out there. It is the bee's knees. They love it. I only put mayfly knees in there, but okay. Oh, 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 Magnifique. This soup is the best I have created, even though I found these mayflies outside, out on the pond. Mwah, did. Your salad, Madame Moiselle. Dave insisted that I try his mayfly soup, but 
I'm more of an herbivore myself. Unfortunately, the day ended early due to Dave feeling a little unwell. I was wondering if the soup was what made him so sick. If only they knew there was something strange about their mayfly meal. Breaking news. Mr. and Mrs. Lee have been missing for the last 48 hours. The last known whereabouts of these crickets was Island Pond, a few miles down from where they reside. Attention! Another couple of crickets has been reported missing. Their last known whereabouts were down by Sun Creek. I immediately recognized where I had seen those couples. Nature's delicious way! I was concerned and frantically called Dave. There is no further information at this time. If you have any information, please call the hotline that we will put on the screen right after this commercial break. Dave, have you seen the news lately? Yeah, I have. It's crazy. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? You want to go to the lake and catch some mayflies? Um, I don't usually go near bodies of water, but uh, I guess there's a first for everything. I guess I'll give it a go. Why was Dave so interested in the water all of a sudden? He'd never talked about going to the lake before. It was all so strange. There was something off about him that day. He just kept repeating, Water. I've got to get to the water. He was acting very weird. Almost zombie-like. Once we got to the lake, it looked like a bunch of crickets had already been there, but they were nowhere to be seen. The only trace of them we found were half-eaten leaves and mayflies. Lots and lots of dead mayflies. Just like the ones everyone was eating at the restaurant. Out of nowhere, Dave suddenly took off running toward the water. I tried to stop him, but it was too late. Dave, no! In the water, I saw all of the other crickets, including Dave, floating dead and crawling out of their bodies were a bunch of horrifying horsehair worms. If I'd have eaten those mayflies, I would have ended up like a zombie too. You think that's scary. You never had to live in the water. You have no idea what goes on down there. It's dark, it's cold, everything is hungry. Me and my sisters had to swim for our lives from the moment we were born. We saw 900 of our siblings get snapped up by bluegills, darters, diving beetles, even dragonfly nymphs. We barely made it out. The amphibians were the worst. They're insatiable, they're monsters. It's like they're nothing but a mouth with two giant legs and dead black eyes. They leap out of nowhere and swallow you whole. But there was something else down there. Something that wasn't in every pond. We were very young the first time we saw it. We didn't know how to describe it. We just called it the Leaping Abomination. What, 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 what was that thing? Shut up! Be still. I don't think it can see us. Did you see that? What the heck was that? It, it looked like a frog, a really big frog. I've never seen a frog that big. I mean, yeah, we hatched like 30 minutes ago, but... Ah! Guys, I don't know about you, but didn't it look somehow different? Like something wasn't right with it? I don't know. Everything down here looks awful. Try not to focus on it. I know, right? Does our species have to lay their eggs in ponds? This is not for me. What are we gonna do? Listen, I think if we stay low, we'll be okay. Pretty much everything down here is bigger than us. If we stay hidden, they won't get us. Stay in cover, rocks, roots, whatever. Dig down in the muck if you have to. So we took her advice. The three of us stuck together, hiding in the shallows, waiting for a meal to pass us by every once in a while. We learned fairly quickly, though, that we weren't the smallest things in the pond. Far from it. All sorts of tiny creatures, nematodes, rotifers, flatworms, we found that the smallest things were the ones you really needed to be scared of. They didn't have gigantic jaws or claws, but if they got a hold of you, you would never get rid of them. And they could change you forever. Psst, check it out! Flatworms, 12 o'clock! That poor tadpole! What were those things? They attached to it! I saw it, just clamped right down on it. 
It must be one of those things that drinks blood. Gross. I hate it here. Don't worry. Look, we're on our last instar. Wings are coming in. We're getting out of this stupid pond soon. You'd think with wings would come freedom. That we could fly anywhere we want and leave that terrible place behind. But that wasn't in the cards for us. Even though we'd live above the surface now, the pond was our lives. And just like before, there were predators everywhere. We made it! I told you we'd be fine, guys! Speak for yourself. How long are these wings supposed to take? I would like to fly soon, thanks. Relax, you can't force it. We'll all be airborne in no time. Just take a minute to chill and... <gasps> Whoa! It's that frog again! Um, I think it's not normal. Nope, but it is hungry. We should fly. Uh, okay, but, uh, but, but my wings aren't working yet. Guys, help! Come on, let's help them! Sapphire, that's suicide! Hurry, there's no time! Okay. Hi. Over here, you big stupid frog! Bro! Come on, we can't do this much longer! You need to get going! Yeah, okay, cool, good note. I'm obviously trying to sprout some wings over here so I don't die. No. Oh no. Oh, outstanding specimen! Yes, look at those limb deformities. Exquisite. Yes, I have never seen a Riparoya infection quite so serious. Amazing mm -mm. that a flatworm, just a bite from a flatworm, can cause a tadpole to turn into something so abominable <laughs> <laughs> yes i love ponds uh, me too uh, oh. <sighs> i hate ponds compared to what i've seen that's nothing oh really what could possibly be worse than that back in the river before i metamorphosed i saw some mighty strange things underwater Unsettling. Very strange. Well, I'm not one to spread stories, but I heard it from Johnny Darter, who heard it from Fanny Darter, and I've seen it happen too, with my own auxilia to old Ange Darter. Well, what did you see? Muscles. started one day that was just like any other day. The sun was shining through the water, the ripples running over the rocky bottom feeling wonderful against my exoskeleton, and the darter family was swimming along nearby. I'd found some algae and paid no mind to their coming and going, as trying to watch them dart to and fro in the water is exhausting. My poor simple eyes never could keep up. But I happened to look up just in time to see old Lange spot a worm wriggling out of the rocks, not ten inches in front of me. I knew it wouldn't take long before it was fish food. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What happened? Oh my sweet old Ange daughter, are you all right? Speak to me! Uh, must have been a bad worm. Something dead longer than I thought. I'm fine now, Johnny. I coughed up whatever it was. You're all right now? Yeah, I'm all right. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. But are you sure, sure? I mean, there's all kinds of... I'm fine. Now would you please stop worrying? Nothing happened, and even if it did, it obviously didn't do anything. See? I feel fine. Nothing to worry about. Awesome. Now, let's go find some real food. I think I saw some insect lava around here somewhere. It was a week or so later that I came across the same family again. Only this time, old Lange didn't say he was fine. I'm glad I didn't eat that worm over there. It was probably as old as the last one I ate. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was older. But speaking of that, now I shouldn't tell Johnny, but I... Shouldn't tell me what? 
Ah, nothing. I, I, I'm fine. I feel fine. It's not a lie. I do feel fine. But ever since I took a bite of that old worm, I keep feeling this phantom tickle all over my gills. A week or so after that, I thought I'd seen the last of them. But then they swam by again. I know you keep saying you're fine, but you've got those awful red bumps on your gills now. That can't be normal. You really ought to have someone look at that. It's just some unsightly growth. It's nothing. I can still eat. I can still swim. I can still... I'd still feel better if you made an appointment to visit the sturgeon for a second opinion. I really don't see the point since it's not bothering me. He certainly seemed fine. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary until one day. I couldn't help my curiosity. I crawled over there as fast as my six legs could pull me, and I arrived just in time. <laughs> mussels. Baby mussels all over the riverbed where the darters had been sleeping. Dozens of them. A whole bed of them. Must have been living on his gills for weeks. And then they finally dropped off. I saw them. Saw them all pushing their tiny shells into the gravel. It was quite a sight. And old Lange never knew he had them on him. Makes you think. Yes, sir. Really makes you think. How does anyone survive these horrifying parasites? I mean, you guys, we survived. Right, Aunt? <laughs> She's infected! Happy.